input as to what, uh, what what you guys would like to see, because this is a community project. It's not only a Trinidad project, it's not only a county project, this is a community project. So as, as we go through tonight, keep one thing in mind is that this is uh, a concept, and as you know, anytime that you have a plan that springs up, there's going to be a lot of twists and turns, there's going to be changes that go along. And that's the whole reason for meetings such as this, because you, we want to get uh, input from everyone. It, there's going to be a lot of concerns. Uh, there are partners in this thing that have major concerns, and that's okay. But if we will work through those, and we believe that we have the right partnership uh, with the uh, Greenway Foundation to, to take care of all of these issues. So uh, as you go through, night, through tonight and listen, keep in mind that this is a concept. As we go along and listen, and then you may some things may, you may may come up in your mind and say this could be different. Or this has to be different. This, you know, there's going to be a Q and A afterwards after the presentation. So feel free to uh, raise your questions. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Jack Chan from the Green Bay Foundation. Thank you, Mayor, and congratulations on your narrow victory last week. <laughs> <laughs> it was a squeaker. Um, it's wonderful to be. Tonight. I'm Jeff Shoemaker. I run the Greenway Foundation. For the last 47 years, uh, we have been involved in revitalizing rivers and reconnecting communities around the metro area and around the state. Um, we have worked as far west as Clear Creek County. We are engaged in a project on the Fountain Creek watershed in Colorado Springs right now. And, uh, we are so delighted to be back here tonight. I want to introduce Brian Aids, uh, Greenway Foundation's Deputy Director, and of course, Dean Pearson, one of the principals with the Arcaterra Group. Uh, Dean once said, you know, Jeff, I don't think you could draw a square if I spotted you three sides, and there's, there's a truth to that. So we all do what we do, but when you don't do something, you bring in somebody that does. And so uh, the, the visions, the concepts that you can see before you are uh, due in great part to the talent of the Arcaterra Group. I want to emphasize what the mayor said. This is a vision plan, this is a concept plan, and I believe, and I believe this sincerely, that this plan speaks to what we heard and listened to at the first meeting here, what we listened to at the second meeting in your rec center, and uh, what we listened to as recently as a Zoom meeting on October 19th, and Dean will speak to that specific response of listening uh, later tonight. Um, every great city has a great river. This is a great city. Um, I'm, I'm the new kid. I'm 13 months into knowing your city. Um, you can take me uh, from 200 miles north, and believe me or not, I, you have a fabulous city like you don't know that, and you have a fabulous river like you don't know that, and people like Julie Knudsen, people like Howard Lackey know that far better than I do, and they are just two of the examples of the commitment to your river that he puts forth. Our goal tonight is to walk you through what we feel, again, is a response to what we've heard from the community and what we think shows can be the next uh, great potential for your river. Um, our project scope is limited to on the upstream end I-25 and downstream end at Linden. Uh, that's the scope that we were asked to focus on and we have. And so with that, um, I want Dean to come up and, and walk you through um, the overall, and then we, we've broken it down, as you can see, into three areas within the mile and a quarter of the river. Walk you through that, and, and then very much hoping that, I don't, I don't know, we've got close to 50 people here. I, I hope there's 51 questions, and uh, we're not done yet, and I'll finish, finish with this. 
everything is iterative in this kind of work. And you're never done evolving, you're never done evolving, you're never done improving, and you're never done listening. And, and so what we will take away tonight is what you ask us to take away. And then uh, I'm excited that we are in the beginning processes of putting the bones around a concept paper to Great Outdoors Colorado. I mentioned this uh, two meetings ago. That will be submitted before Thanksgiving to ask the opportunity for a full-blown grant with GOCO before the end of the year to take concept and bring it to the next level of reality. And we're doing that on behalf of the city of Trinidad as well. So honored to be here, delighted to be here. And with that, I'll have the brains of the joint come up and, and visit with you. This is Dean Pearson. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm sorry, this call is here. I'm going to stand here because I've got a laser pointer I'm going to use in a second. But um, thank you all for being here tonight. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm going to give a quick overview of the the concept plan sort of from one end to the other and then I'm going to zoom in on three different areas and then show some um, some design character images. It's important to note that those images are not exactly what we're proposing but just the idea or the sort of character of that image. Uh, and then as Jeff said we'll do questions and answers after that. We also have some comment sheets if you're not comfortable asking or you just have some comments that you want to jot down we'll be happy to take those back as well. So the concept plan that you see on the screen right now, that has uh, three different zones. Um, essentially this blue zone we're calling the civic zone. That's from I-25 to Commercial Street. That includes Chimino Park, um, includes the Waterworks Building. Um, then we're looking at what we're calling an active recreation zone. From Commercial Street down to the east end of Los Niños Soccer Park. And then the last segment, from that point down to Linden, we're calling the Passive Recreation Riparian Zone. And so in those areas, I just want to talk about um, a lot of the things that we're showing have been somewhat vetted, but we still have a long way to go with that. We've talked with some, some of the property owners that were proposing things. We've talked with them and have had their initial okay. There are quite a few properties we don't know who owns them. It's literally called out as unknown ownership. So the city's in the process of trying to figure out some of those things. So if you see something, don't be alarmed. We still have some vetting to do. It's our goal through this process to really think big. And we've asked you to think big. We've asked um, city staff to think big. This is not something intended to be built in the next few years for us, but for our children and our, our grandchildren. So this is something we intend to be really big and really lasting and really powerful for the city of Trinidad. In terms of connections, we, we noted a few connections on here. Um, a couple of connections to Trinidad State College. One from Commercial Street under I-25 along Pine. Another one uh, down to the south at um, Anima Street and then to University and Prospect. So it's our intent there to have some streetscape improvements, some wayfinding signage so that it's easy for the students to get downtown and, and back again. So that we really make that connection stronger and more clear. We're also showing a connection um, along Santa Fe Trail. It's our understanding that the transportation plan is going to propose a trail there to link into Fisher's Peak State Park. And then we're also showing a smaller connection from the proposed wellness center on Commercial Street, uh, a wellness walk that would connect into Chimino Park and then connect to the river trail. In terms of the river trail, um, again, starting sort of just um, downstream of I-25, right now the trail crosses both of those streets and we're looking at taking the trail under those streets. And again, that has to be vetted, we're gonna need detailed survey information. We're going to need to work with a civil engineer to see if we need to build a low flood wall or a cutoff wall so it doesn't flood. But our goal there is to separate the trail users from cars. Those intersections where they're crossing right now are pretty unsafe. So uh, by doing both of those underpasses, we separate cars and pedestrians and cyclists. The trail goes under a commercial now, and it basically would follow the same alignment. We're also proposing a loop trail on the north side of the river, basically from Cedar to Linden. It's our intent for that trail to be a little bit narrower, not as wide as the concrete trail, and to be a soft surface material like crusher finds, crushed granite. 
So that's maybe five or six feet wide, just for a different trail user experience. So um, if you were to start at the Waterworks building, there's a connection to the trail. It, it's the concrete trail, you cross Linden. It's the soft surface trail, cross commercial at grade, come down to Cedar on the sidewalk. And so that whole loop is one and a half miles from length. So it'd be a really nice loop for people to use. And uh, so we're trying to make the trail more safe by going underneath the roads and just a better user experience to be able to be along the river and feel like you're part of that community. And then just a, a, a final note about sort of corridor-wide, I think we want to continue Julie's good work to remove non-native invasive plant species and then enhance those with uh, more native species as it's practical to do so. So, Ryan, if you wouldn't mind, the next slide, please. So, if you could scroll up a little. Up, please. There you go. So, I'll start with the Civic Zone. And, really, this is Chimino Park. So, we've really reimagined Chimino Park. Um, so, Modica Drive right now cuts through the park right here. We're showing relocating that closer to um, the church property and having parking there and more than doubling the size of the park. So with the trail being down below, we've got a, a, an accessible ramp down to the trail. We've got a, um, a pretty wide sidewalk, brick sidewalk promenade that could be used for food trucks or um, tents for farmers markets or art festivals. Um, and then we've got a great lawn here. That great lawn can hold between 4,000 and 6,000 people, depending if they're standing or sitting. So again, you could look at having music festivals, outdoor recreation festivals, arts festivals, all kinds of events there. We're showing a stage slash shade structure here, and then some river access. The river access might look something like this. We heard that at the first couple meetings that people like more natural materials like stone versus concrete. So um, that's sort of the character we're imagining there, but it's a way for people to get right down to the river. We're showing a, um, a recirculating splash pad um, that's a little bit bigger than the one that's there now. Another shade structure, shelter here, and then a couple playgrounds, one for two to five year olds and then a separate one for older kids, five to 12 years in age. Um, we're going to keep the buildings that are on the intersection, the corner now, and the courts, and then um, keep the existing memorial in place. Um, we would like to, as we cross the street and look at the Waterworks building, which will be um, Jared's new office, right? The Office of Outdoor uh, Recreation. You know, as, as that building right now sits below the street and there's a railing and a wall there, so it's our idea to, to kind of give that building a street presence. So take the railing out, um, build a little brick plaza in the sidewalk, and then have some steps down to the building, a little plaza in front of the building, and then a, an accessible ramp through the back of the building. Take out some of that flood wall that's there now and do a little um, plaza outdoor space there that's cantilevered over the wall looking at the river, a nice um, overlook down to the river. And then um, this space, which is, as far as we can tell, there's a piece of that that's owned by the city, a piece by the county, and then there's one of those uh, unknowns right here. So, but there we're showing something a more quiet, passive space that, um, would have some small pressure lines, paths, and benches. And we also heard that people like to have the river corridor active, but would also like to have some more quiet, contemplative spaces. So that's, that would, um, that would uh, fulfill that idea. And some zero plantings, perhaps, some gardens in there. And then we're showing um, some steps down from Commercial Street on the west side, and then a ramp down on the east side, again, to connect people from downtown, from Commercial Street, to the trail and to the river below. And then we're showing the, uh, the actual bridge over the river, the sidewalk being widened, some of the parking spaces going away, widening that brick sidewalk, having some shade structures there, a uh, place for people to gather and hang out and look at the river below, have their coffee, have their lunch. Um, make it, instead of just a passing by, a place to actually look at the river and celebrate the, the river below. 
So splash pads, I think everybody knows what those are, but these are some ideas, again, sort of character images of what that might look like. Um, these are a couple of images of what the shade structure slash stage might look like. Could be very open like the one on the right, or could be somewhat enclosed like the one on the left. But those are the you know, kind of general idea of what we're imagining. Next slide, please. All right, so this is the, the next zone, the active recreation zone. And that is really from commercial down again to about the east end of Los Niños Park. And I'll start with Los Niños Park and then work my way upstream. Um, it's our goal here to, you know, if you're on the trail right now, you pass a basketball court with a big chain link fence and a retaining wall and a playground, and it's just not very inviting for trail users to go into the park. So what we wanted to do is try and bring the park out towards the river. And, and it, you can't really get down to the river because there's a steep slope, but we thought, well, how about we do this nice, lawn oval with a little overlook at the river and the trail passes through that so that's a place where you can still have that function of warming up for games that are going to be held here we'll relocate the basketball court and the playground over here and then have a walk kind of around the park as well to get you out back out to the chestnuts and then what we're showing on um, on the river in this area is really it's really the um, stuff that Julie has been working on with S2O design. So Julie has gotten some grants to repair the dam and to do some, to make it boat friendly and fish friendly and create some um, small grade control structures downstream of that. So we took that uh, design from S2O and basically just incorporated, incorporated that into our plan. We, we had some ideas to go a little bit bigger there, but that was, um, that was not really vetted with the irrigators, the water companies very well, so we still have some work to do there. We'd still love to have those conversations, but maybe that happens in the next phase of the project. So for now, that's what we're showing here. The other um, big idea we have here is this pedestrian bridge, the flag bridge. You know, it's a really nice bridge, but in terms of pedestrian use, those railroad bridges are really high, so we're, we're worried about safety. And do we start cutting holes into the metal, and how do we really make that safe and make that work? And, we just started looking around and saying, well, why don't we do something really cool? Why don't we do a, a curved bridge, keep the piers, but do something that's curved, that will take people from the new commercial development and put them onto Chestnut Street, um, have some access to the trail there, and then have a space in the center where pedestrians can actually gather and hang out and, and look at the river and enjoy this, this beautiful corridor. So, Again, these are some images of what the S2O stuff might look like below the dam, some, some small grade control structures. Um, this bridge I love, it's got a place for pedestrians, it's got sort of stepped seating, and if you can scroll up a little more, Ryan, please. You know, I, I love this where it's... Or you could do that too. Um, <laughs> Anyway, the idea is to have shade and just to have places, again, where people can have lunch, can have coffee, can meet. Um, just, there aren't many bridges like that in the country. That one I was showing you that's really cool was um, in Providence, Rhode Island, called the Providence River. So, shut down. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> so here you see that sort of pedestrian space, um, you know, steps and someone's putting on a concert. Um, just, we were just really inspired by um, a bridge that's not just a point A to point B, but a place where people can actually enjoy the river. My work here is done. And then the last area is what we're calling the passive recreation riparian zone. And we're not proposing a lot in this area. I, I mentioned the loop trail on the north side. Um, we are showing a small trailhead on city property uh, that would have 40 uh, odd spaces and a shade structure, just another place for people to access the trail. Um, Julie's working on taking out the jetty jacks, which we think will be great. And then we are showing a 
an access point with a sort of a small beach, so that's a place where people can have access to the river. It's a place where tubers can take out. Um, and then again, just thinning, thinning this out. This, this part of the river is pretty thick with, with some non-native trees, so I think that's a good place to, to do some of that. So again, the, our, our images for the soft surface trail will look something like that. And this, you've all seen trailheads, but this is something like what the trailhead might look like. So that's all I had for my presentation. I wanted to spend most of our time having a, a discussion about what you like, what you like, what you don't like about what you've seen, and then other ideas that you might have. So at this point, Jeff and I are happy to entertain any and all questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, the bridge that you were just showing that's yes, going across the river, is that going to impede the water flow? And is who's going to clean out that when all the debris gets caught in there going down the river? Um, so we would not be putting anything in the river. We would use the existing piers. So there's concrete piers that hold up the railroad bridge now. We would just take the bridge off and build a new one on top. So um, our goal would be to, to be, I don't know what the floodplain elevation is, but our goal would be to be above that if that's possible. But it, it certainly wouldn't be any lower than the railroad bridge is now. So you're not going to add any more. You're going to use the existing stuff that's already there. Yes. Okay. So all the debris that goes down has been going and would hit the same exact thing. Huh? Exactly. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. yes, sir. Have you guys contemplated a river surfing way in the We have. We've talked with s 2 about that, and they don't think there's enough flow to do that. I mean, there is, there is at certain times or certain events, but not a constant flow. So they, they could create a great structure that would mainly be used by tubers, but during certain flows, it could be used as a surf. Yes, sir. Now, what percentage of money should be left for maintenance that's going to be put upon the city to maintain all this river wall? And with things that are happening now, yeah. the city is struggling, it seems, to keep abreast of all this. So you, it seems like you're just creating a monster for the city, for the future. So it's a financial. Yeah, no, so it's a percentage of this grant and of the grant is coming. So it's a it's a great comment. So right now we don't even know what this will cost, and so our grant is for the next phase, which is the planning. And when we finish and get all your input, we will put a cost to it. So we'll know that by the end of the year. And it's our intent to get this planning grant and start doing more detailed planning and design next year, and then submit for a centennial grant for a significant amount of money from Great Outdoors Colorado for construction. But we don't know what that is yet. So I think we have to have discussions with the city about maintenance as well. And those discussions, to Dean's point, will happen as, and we have to say if now, if the concept paper is approved, I believe it will be, find out how wrong I am in four to six weeks, uh, we will be allowed to submit a grant that is due by the end of, I'm sorry, we will find out before the end of this month if the concept paper allows us to move to the next full grant proposal. I believe it will. That grant proposal is due uh, before Christmas. So we'll have some work to do. We're already starting and putting the bones around that in conversations internally and with Great Outdoors Colorado. Great Outdoors Colorado does not fund maintenance. That's a, that's a local landowner, municipality, jurisdictional thing, but those discussions will be happening as we're putting costs and ideas to the plan. My father, who founded the Greenway Foundation, burned into my brain, don't build something that you can't maintain. So you're speaking to my very heart in that statement. And there will be additional sources of money. Julie has done a great job. I feel like all we're doing is saying Julie, Julie, Julie tonight, and, and appropriately so. But uh, where are you? There you are. Um, Julie has a great relationship already in place with Colorado. Uh, water Conservation Board, so there will be other funding opportunities that we look at, public-private philanthropic opportunities are there. And the, the goal is to step by step, uh, one of the decisions will have to be what's first. Uh, of the three zones and within those three zones, what's, what's the first 
favorite child to come into play, what timing is involved. I, I will repeat what I stated earlier at both of the first two meetings, and it ain't in the bank till it's in the bank. But the now permanent executive director, Jackie Miller of GOCO, is the reason. You can blame Jackie for Greenway Foundation being here if you want to, because Jackie is the one when these discussions that were happening was the uh, person then acting interim executive director who encouraged a conversation between your city and the Greenway Foundation to take place. And she is a rock star, believes in this project. Jake Houston of Trust for Public Land was here as well. And they also believe in this project as do other sources of money. So I, I hope that semi answers your question. Jeff, I'd like to answer this gentleman's question. One of the things is like I mentioned earlier when I opened up and I said that we were uh, trying to create a that Trinidad as a destination area. And what that will do is the amount of tourism that will be increased will bring in a lot of additional tax revenue into the community. So the maintenance portion of that, they'll hopefully keep our fingers crossed, that we'll be able to generate enough tourism to come here to offset so that we will have enough money to add to the, so that there'll be enough money for maintenance in the future. Yes, sir. So uh, when, I mean, we're putting the, the cart before the horse, when does the Army Corps, when do they get their say on if this happens before you submit the GOCO for the GOCO, GOCO grant or after? Oh, that would be after. And, and I, I understand, we, I don't believe, I, I do believe the horse is in front of the cart. And I will tell you, the Greenway Foundation has a 47-year successful history with the Army Corps of Engineers, including a significant project that's taking place in Denver, and there will be opportunities in Fountain Creek as well. What we talked about today at lunch is can we uh, uh, fit into a nationwide um, 404 permit, which would be great, cheaper, faster, easier. I, I don't anticipate, and I'm caveating the heck out of this, our goal is to not need to get an individual 404 permit. It takes longer, costs more money, you know, a pain in the you-know-what. But at the end of the day, you know, the old joke, what's the difference between God and the Army Corps of Engineers? God doesn't think he's the Army Corps of Engineers. And, and so they are the reality they are, and we are already initiating those conversations. Gil and I talked about that this very day. We, ha we do not have the level of relationships that Gil and others have with the Albuquerque district. We have decades-long successful relationships with the Omaha district, but, you know, Omaha and Albuquerque talk all the time, so I'm confident, as and if needed, those relationships can come into play. And have you developed a relationship with CPW, too? Um, in my night job, I'm the director of the Colorado Parks Foundation. And, and I only tell you that because uh, we're going to give close to $100,000 of grants, and there's an outstanding grant right now to Crystal Dryling and Fisher's Peak State Park. So those conversations are well into play as well. Yes, sir. Okay, <clears throat> let me ask you a question when you're talking about the cart in front of the horse. I'm not sure if everybody's aware that all water that's released from that dam belongs to agriculture. So the, the river is beautiful. But every drop of water that comes out of that dam belongs to agriculture, and we make a living with that water. It's nice that we have all of this stuff going on, but we've made no effort other than October 19th to work with agriculture, of which we have worked well with the city, with Gabrielson, the Chimino project down there. We have had, before October 19th, we haven't worked with the Greenway Foundation at all. Now, that water that comes out of that dam absolutely is paid for by agriculture, is owned by agriculture, just like the O&M charge, and I'm talking operation and maintenance at that dam. We're setting up at $195,000. All of that is paid by agriculture, every bit of that. There is a loan we're repaying right now on the Trinidad Dam that we owe over $4.1 million on that dam, paid for by agriculture every year. Now. As we come down this river here, and anything you put in that river, and that's right, we're working right now to remove all species that don't belong in that river. But I see pictures that we're going to put in trees back in the river. Well, that contract with the city and the Purgatory River Water Conservancy District maintains a 15,000 foot channel through that river, of which we all know will never happen. 
Okay, but that river won't hold a 5,000 foot channel. And I'm not sure this is another thing that anybody understands. Everybody thinks there's a dam up there and that dam will stop all flooding. Purgatory River holds every drop of flood water that comes off of Raton Pass. Every bit of it from the top of Raton Pass, every street in the Trinidad, Colorado, the state highway, every canyon below the dam drains into that river. So nor you nor I or any vision will stop a five or 6,000 acre foot flood that comes down of which we've had five in the last two years that have wiped out everything. I operate the head gate right there at the pick of wire and back a ditch. That water has come up over the top of that head gate. It has flooded that head gate. It has brought so much debris into that head gate that I've had to get an excavator down into the river to clean that head gate. Anything else that we put down in that river is going to end up, first of all, in my head gate. Once it passes that first dam right there at the pick of wire, it's got 10 more head gates to go down. So any rocks, any trees, any structures like that we had that they wanted to put, everything comes down and it washes in there. Now, there's no way we're going to stop that or control that. We can control the dam, but we can't control flooding. So anything that's put down in that river, people don't realize that there's gigantic rocks that have been moved. So you've got tons of rocks that are moved down that river, moved over the top, and, and it comes down and it gets lodged in the river and moving. So as you have all of this stuff moving down the river and all the floods, I mean, this is going to come into this river, plug it up, and when it does, this stops water flowing. The more you hold that water back, the more evaporation that you have, the more saturation that you have. That means less water going to agriculture. Now, we make a living with this water. You know, we have cattle, we've got goats, we've got chickens, we've got everything else. Fields we make a living, you know, raising crops and doing everything that we do. Well, it's nice to have the recreation and the fun times and a destination for folks. It's also agriculture, which has supported the city of Trinidad through good and bad, buying at the stores in Trinidad and helping out Trinidad. So it would be nice at point one, if agriculture was the first ones that was talked about, of which didn't happen until October 19th, when we talk to you. And you know what? We've got many grants that we have that we're working on the river. We've got grants we're applying for and projects we're working on that have been totally disregarded to this point. So, so let, me, let me try and then weigh in as, yeah. as you wish. Um, this is the third public meeting where the public has had the opportunity to weigh in. Um, we have engaged with Purgatory Watershed partners from the very beginning. Um, before the city saw our plan, Purgatory Watershed Partners saw that plan. You are right, it took until the 19th of October between schedules on everybody's part to schedule that meeting. But there have been outreach and um, efforts to try to maximize the engagement between the ag community, the irrigators, and this team. Uh, my statement to you earlier tonight personally was if you need 100% to be perfect, you'll be miserable all your life. I can't change the past, I can affect the future. So part of why I'm glad you're here tonight is your candor. And by the way, Dean, could you pull the, the drawing that um, we uh, obtained from the Purgatory Watershed Partnership? Thank you. And there's a point, there's a, an important point to this. Thank you. Um, and, and I'm, I'm going to say what I'm going to say just because it's important to keep a good mood in the building. I have a loud mouth, I have a big mouth, and I have two bigger ears. So I, I say that to you in a bit of jest because what we are showing between Commercial Street and the railroad bridge is this, which is Julie's good work with S2O. Which, which actually was private and has not been vetted. It was just an idea that okay. was never okay. Our attempt after... I, I do love, I love all the progress we've had, but just so you know, that was okay. not vetted or agreed on. And what we heard loud and clear at the meeting on the 19th is, A, we hate your damn idea, okay? You'll have to roll all of us to make it happen. Concept, vision, start, beginning, evolve, adjust, and we've done that. Five minutes. Dean will tell you this. Jared will tell you this. Five minutes after that call, well, five seconds after our meeting ended, Jared, Dean, and I are on the phone with Ryan saying, pull that. 
and replace it with what my understanding is, is a vision, and I'll use the word, Julie, conceptually, initially, primarily, that is supported by your organization because it's your document. So that's what we're showing. I don't know of any single potential of injury for the water that you do need. And, and I'm not going to overstate this. I was born of Iowa farm, farm stock. And I've worked a farm, big deal, I'm a city guy, but more than any, I, I think as much as any outsider, sir, can appreciate what you're saying, I understand it and I get it, and I've spent my life in water rights and preventing injury to water rights. And it is your dam, excuse me, it is your head gate, it is your dam, it is your water. And even the other plan, the concept of which you guys did not like, it's great, it's gone, um, did not pose in our opinion, based on S2O, based on respect, the engineering company did not put that ability to take get your water, emphasis your water, and put that at risk. But for the sake of progress, and for the sake of next step, that is this. And uh, I understand what you're saying. Uh, can we communicate better? I probably have a PhD in mistake. And so my point is, I think we can all as a community do a better job moving forward of communicating. I've made that commitment to several of you here tonight. I've given my business card, I got more, I'll put them on the back table. You can email me, you can call me, you can voicemail me, you can text me. I'm a prompt responder, Ryan will speak to that, Dean will speak to that, the city will speak to that. And so our goal here is to move this to the next step initial concept, vision, and maximize the opportunity as we've attempted to do over the last several months by having three separate public meetings, um, including this one here tonight. So that's, that's the most honest and best way I can answer your concerns. Um, I don't believe there's a bit of harm that we're putting forward. Uh, Dean, I, I'm on the edge of my smart here. So yeah, no, we're we're not proposing a lot of things in the river that I would see washing out or mm -mm. impacting mm -mm. your head gate. Um, mm -mm. Again, the, the stone steps, which will be anchored in really well at Chino Park, um, the trail. That's really about it. Right. For the very reasons you've mentioned, and Julius championed that on this city's behalf. <laughs> Howard has championed that in Howard's own Howard way, very very emphatically and strongly. It's one of the reasons I think we're friends is that you just, it's just this. We're, we're too old, or I'm too old to be subtle anymore. I don't know if I ever was. So you had a question. Huh? Yes. Uh, first thing I'd like to see that the uh, area from the commercial to the trestle was changed because it, you know, it really was a problem with uh, uh, the fish. Was, you know, there were just a lot of things that weren't going to work very well. The second part of it is that you know, since we started this project, this whole river has really become a focal point of the community and an important part of the community. So part of what I can see and need probably needs to be developed so that we avoid these kind of misunderstandings, put it that way, is that probably there should, it should be a, a group, however you want to form it, you know, with the irrigators, with PWP, with the city, Anybody else that wants to? By the way, Saturday we're having a trash cleanup on the river, so if you want to come down to sign up, <laughs> but have it specifically to talk about these issues in the river and figure out which way needs to go so that there is a consensus. Because right now there was a, oh my God, what are we going to do with this? We need to get it to a consensus point of view. Everybody's got the input in it. It's going to make life much easier for everybody and probably more fun. So I just, I just think that this is a, you know, the, the concept of all this going on with the river is absolutely amazing, and I think it's got real potential for the future, but it's got to be done right. The irrigators got to be protected, yep. number one. The environment's got to be protected, number two, habitat. You know, then the city uh, and their responsibility for maintaining the channel is going to be a big part of it. So it's all a bunch of different people, and, and as Trinidad does, we have lots of people who get involved in things that really talk to each other. So this is a situation where everybody, it's crucial that everybody talks to each other so that we keep this thing moving in the right direction. And when we get pots of money, we can do this section because we benefit this group or that group or all the groups. 
and so forth on by and on. So it's a linear plan that will give us a roadmap to make sure that we get all this stuff done in a timely, efficient, and hopefully uh, the right way. I'll use the word engaged. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I cannot change the past, I can affect the future. So, you know, I, I don't know what perfect is, so all I can do is try to do better the next day. We've tried. So if we've succeeded, fine. If we failed, fine. Can't fix that. We are under contract uh, on this particular plan, and it will be, I think, by the end of the month or certainly the end of the year completed. Is that fair? End of the year. End of the year. And then we are, again, immediately, we have an addendum to our contract to be overseeing a grant that Trinidad has to. Remember, the, this concept paper will be submitted to um, GOCO by Trinidad, and if we are lucky enough to be allowed to apply for the grant, that will be submitted with our help uh, by the City of Trinidad. But Jared, I'll, I'll just I'll say to you, sir, let's you and I, before the night is over, talk about how we can, and I'm not going to be, it is not my role to be in charge of who and how many are invited to the dance. That, that would be remarkably um, rude. And, and inappropriate for that to happen. So we're happy as if and when we are allowed to continue on this project, if Trinidad chooses to continue its relationship with the Greenway Foundation team, then we will uh, turn to the mayor, turn to Jared and, and say, okay, how often do we get together? Where do we get together? Who's at the party? What do we talk about? Do we meet monthly? Do we meet quarterly? I'm so over Zoom, I could just, commit Harry Carey, but this is a case when you've got a team that's 200 miles to the north, that Zoom is a smart way of doing that. But we've gotten here the last three trips in under two hours and 20 minutes. So we got the drive down, and, and we're happy to come down here. And I will say, D Dean made a trip to visit with some stakeholders on his own, off the clock, a week ago Monday, so that in-person conversa in conversations could happen. So Howard... We've been committed to this from day one. We're committed to it today, and let's just find a way to let's find a way to work better together. That's all we can do. Have you a question about? Yeah, I do. Um, so I think it's a, you're in a community that's really innovative, very passionate about trying new things. So welcome, congrats to the city for, for engaging in this. Um, Are you with the Army Corps of Engineers? Yes. Did my joke make you mad? You had, you had to have heard it. You, you had, you, and it's actually a compliment to the Army Corps of Engineers that God should be mad at me, not you guys. And, and so the answer is yes, and the answer has always been yes, but that, in my experience, happens at this next phase. One of the first meetings that happens when you take concept, 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 and you begin to turn it into actual design. Because here's the bottom line, this, th nothing, I don't care what this ends up being, all I do, but it doesn't matter what it's going to be, it ain't going to go nowhere if you guys don't give it this. Not going to happen. And I don't believe we're doing a thing that would, that would ever put the city of Trinidad at greater risk in terms of stream flows that come through 5,000, 8,000, 3,000 through through uh, the Purgatory River in, in Trinidad. I, 
And I, I don't want to overstate this. This isn't my first rodeo. Uh, this is my life's work. And, and we understand this. And I appreciate the good counsel, but I can assure you that's already in her wheelhouse at the right time. And the right time, if we're lucky enough to get this grant, is early next year. And so my, my experience, and yes, it's another district with the core. Every time we've tried to approach them with a concept plan, they can tell us come back when we have detail because we don't have detailed survey. We don't. We can't answer any of their questions. So the next phase is when we're planning on getting like survey cross sections of the bridge, tying it in with the floodplain study that's happening. So. So, We'd be happy to meet with core representatives right now, but I, I'm worried we don't have enough details. So right now we're planning to do that in, in the next more detailed design phase. I would bring the federal regulatory office in, Josh Carpenter. Okay. He has done a lot of the projects here that have gone in before. And he can give you some comments with these plans that have now I don't think we need anything more specific. Okay, that'd be great. There's a project. Okay, just to be clear, though. The work that we've already done there, we've got several studies and analysis of the river. So, that and this this is just our, our jetty jack removal piece so a few years ago people got excited to remove jetty jacks but they didn't approach army corps in the right way and everything ended up getting shut down and army corps was not excited to work with people moving forward now this was before my time so now i have very carefully reinstituted relationships with Army Corps. We're doing everything by the book. We're working really well together. Every step we take, we vet with them and vice versa. And so I would strongly ask that any conversations with Army Corps don't show renegade concepts and is just very careful and thoughtful and loops in all of us that are already working with Army Corps so we don't get the whole thing shut down again because that's happened before. And that would be very frustrating. 100% agree. And again, Julie, how you have repaired, restored, rebirthed a relationship with Army Corps of Engineers is to be applauded. That's how we work. But to Dean's point, and we'll find the person that is the right person to start with in Albuquerque. And if they're ready to sit down with us when we've got concepts on paper for which there's no budget, for, you know, there's no vetting of pricing, I, I have to tell you my experience is Dean is right. They're, they're going to go, wait, here, here's five questions. And what about this, 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 and this? We're not ready yet. Well, then come back to us when you are ready. Don't bring your short pants game to my big pants game. And, and so I, we'll find out if the time to initiate a conversation with them is before we get into the next phase of actual design and costing. And if they're ready to have that conversation and they feel it's of value, that's great. My experience tells me my colleague is correct in terms of timing. But let's find out. I haven't worked with Albuquerque before. I'll tell you that's how it works with Omaha. So let's find out how it works with Albuquerque. I have another question about the flooding that we had this spring that the, the water was up to the commercial street bridge flooded out down the river flooded I mean blew out ditches the whole what are you guys going to do with this concept to protect this concept when this happens again I'm 
want to say this in the right way, because uh, I'm, I'm evidently not doing a good job of communicating. There will be nothing, there is nothing in this concept that puts added risk to the river in place. That's not what I'm asking. What I'm asking is, is when we have another one of these floods, like we had this spring, mm -hmm. what is going to keep all of this beautiful stuff here from being washed away and gone? So, again, all we're really proposing in the river are those stone steps and the trail. Mm -hmm. So the trees that you're putting in the river, that wow. you're for removing the trees, and you guys are talking about putting trees back in. And I'm asking how you're going to protect this stuff from the flooding. I'm sorry, what stuff exactly are you referring to? Well, let's see. Uh, did you guys see pictures of the flooding this spring? Yes. Yes. Okay, so it came up over the tops of the head gates. It yes. came up the banks. It came up over what you guys call the, the what is it, the island? Yeah. The island? The beach. We got the beach or whatever, and all this stuff, and, and washed out all this stuff down here that we had to get in machinery and everything to clean out all this stuff. How are you going to protect this stuff that, that's there, like the beach and the, the trees and all this, and when it gets washed away in the next flood? We're not proposing a beach. The beach is what's there now, and, and the tree, a lot of the trees you see are existing, and we're not proposing a massive. So you're not going to plant any more trees in there? I won't say we won't plant any, but my comment was we want to take out down in Basin and plant uh, native plants. End of the river that they drink water that belongs to agriculture? Yeah, but it be Where do you think they get the water? Oh, okay. <laughs> the trees are the trees right there. Okay, just asking how you were going to try to mitigate flooding risk or anything. Right. I think we're, it's not our intent to propose a lot of improvements in the river channel, okay. especially trees. That's not our intent. Uh, Julie, can you help me out here? Um, you know, part of, the, part of Julie's efforts in the past uh, four years at Sam Wallace before you was to get down in the river to remove invasives and to clean out the channel because of my concerns about the stormwater releases. We needed to open up that channel. This project they're talking about continues that removal of invasives, which opens up the channel. So their project is actually going to enhance the ability to move more water through that channel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That was to answer my question. So I just need Gil to get up here because he's talking smarter than I. But <laughs> there is there is no concept. Uh, I use the word injure or damage. There's nothing in this plan that reduces the capability of water safety and water delivery. <clears throat> that, that's not in this plan. It, it wouldn't be approved by the city. It wouldn't be approved by the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, nobody would fund that. So, if there was lack of clarity in that, I apologize. But that, and, and as Dean has said, um, a trail, a, 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 an underpass in a couple places, a set of stairs, a ramp, a uh, soft surface trail, and, and depending on the height and the, and the um, force of water, there's a possibility the soft surface trail could wash out. There is, but we've tried to keep it fairly far from and, and, and to that point, far enough away to where that option is there. Um, we've lost lots of trail in flooding. And then you put it back and you wait for the next gift. Yes, ma'am. I, I think I would add um, for the active recreation zone, um, my dream is that Jeff is nodding his head, there's going to be much better communication and collaboration moving forward. On everybody's part. Yeah. On everybody's and, part. And we will all be working together to refine the design of this active recreation zone as one example, because uh, the, what got inserted now was something was just an idea off the books, not meant for public sharing, but it ended up being publicly shared. Um, but before the flooding, but this idea was designed before the flooding, this, this piece between commercial and the railroad bridge. 
Um, and as you may know, uh, there's a lot more going on down there now, post-flooding. Um, a lot of earth washed away, we've got new river channels, um, there, there's a lot that needs to be refined and edited in there. Um, and we also, the, this multi-user project with irrigators and CPW and um, Trout Unlimited, PWP, um, for restoring the dam, installing boat passage, fish passage, doing a bunch of irrigation infrastructure improvements, making it look nice down there. That's, that's our dream, that we have much better collaboration <coughs> moving forward, that we're really tying all these pieces together better. We're very much looking at flood resilience. We're, to the extent we can, we're putting in trails. We use what we learned from the flood event this May as an example of where we probably don't want to put trails or how can we put them higher. There's probably some erosion issues that need to be addressed on the south side that, that we or the Greenlee Foundation probably haven't even been thinking about yet. So I, I think there's some really neat opportunities to, to do a lot of improvements down there for much better flood resilience, good fish passage, good water delivery for irrigators. I, I see a lot of potential in that area, but it will probably change substantially, I think, from what you're seeing in this picture. You know, and I want to say that Julie's efforts are going to continue. Mm -hmm. Greenway's <coughs> design is a double downing of that effort to open up that channel. Now now we we have the PWT fund PWP funding and we will have this additional funding to uh, collaborate down there and just do more. Perfect. Gil, you guys are talking about safety. Now, let me ask this, and the reason I, I have knowledge of this, I spend hundreds of hours down in the river because I operate that head gate. It's nice. As a matter of fact, we're working to have a, a tubing for tubing and canoes at a certain time of the year. We've been working to do that. My question to you is, and, and folks don't realize this because I've been standing there when I've got people down the river taking pictures you know they'll know there's going to be a 700 acre foot release at the dam and they think you're going to get this wave coming down it it comes down slow and it moves down slow but what people don't understand once again i'm back to a flood in ratone creek it could be beautiful down here and you have a downpour in ratone creek people don't understand you're down playing in the water playing in the river kiddie pool i noticed that there's a kiddie pool there people don't understand that in a 30 minute period and I'm talking July and August when we had three and a half inches of rain, three and three inches of rain, two and a half inches of rain. We went from 600 acre feet to 3,800 acre feet, not from the dam, but from Raton Creek. Folks don't realize when they're down playing in this water, that's not a game, that's not a little trickle. That is 3,200 acre feet coming now, bang. You got people playing in the river in tubes or, or canoes and they don't see this coming. What happens to all these folks that are playing in this kiddie pool and tubing when they don't see this coming? So here's, I can describe what happened uh, since 2017, since we saw that. Uh, when these waters are released from Trinidad Lake or the stream gauges are showing these kind of flows, I get a call and I actually got a call in 2017 at 4 a.m. Uh, from DNR and uh, I was notified and I immediately notified the city, uh, in particular, um, and I don't know what the process in the city, but they notified public safety to make sure that we were doing everything possible to address the issue you're talking about. So that is the process that I've been working with for a while now. I get notified immediately and I notify the city. I'll, I'll add on to that. Um, Cherry Creek, below Chatfield, excuse me, below Cherry Creek Reservoir. I too have seen between releases out of the reservoir because water coming in requires water going out. Between that and a high level storm, and I'm referring to the flooding of 2017, and then before that 2013, 
have been to Denver and in this section, there is a five-mile channelized section of Cherry Creek on either side of which is Spear Boulevard. It's a 10-foot high wall. It is a 100-year flood containment wall, and you are right, it comes fast. And it comes without warning, and it comes without mercy. And I've seen that water. We actually, the old joke is I'd like to sell you a bridge. We could actually sell you two old railroad bridges over Cherry Creek that, that we have and have put to good use. And the water was less than three feet from the bottom of that and less than six inches from the top of the wall. And, and so I, as much as anybody outside of this community can appreciate that risk factor, we continue to try to figure out how we can pre-warn the community that stream flows are coming. And we do that in a number of means and manners, including working with, again, the folks at the Tri Lakes Project, Chatfield, Cherry Creek, and Bear Creek Reservoirs, to let them know that this is not the best day to bring your rubber ducky and come down to Cherry Creek. So I, I, I understand, I believe I understand what you're saying. There was a question I thought you had. <laughs> I'll get back to you. No, it was just in front of you. I, I, I didn't call you ma'am, sir. I promise. Okay. You mentioned the railroad bridge, something about changing it, taking it out. It's too high. Didn't I hear that? You, the yes, proposal? yes, sir. The, the railroad bridge, the sides of the bridge are very high. If someone's on the bridge, they can't see the river, people can't see them. There's, in my mind, a safety issue if it's nighttime and we're encouraging to ask Yes, the, the red, white, and the flag bridge. Project site? Yeah. Okay. From, from uh, it's the footbridge up. Where, see the tubers there? Going north upstream towards the dam. Okay. Okay. That area, I don't know what the, where, why we stopped there or do we run out of funds there, but that will give you an indication of what's happening where we need the Army Corps of Engineers to reinvestigate this and suggest to us how to maintain that other banks and that river, that river uh, uh, containment and direction of it, it seems like, from my experience, being around the building, that, if you change the direction a little bit of a natural flow of the river, it'll fight back and want to, want to take it back unless you go to an extreme of the flood wall. Water winds. That's what's happening. And, and the other thing is taking out these invasive species. Are we talking about the the, uh, the Chinese elm? That's wrong. And those that's that's wonderful that's looking trees that have white leaves in the summertime. I heard they're invasive. You tech them out so fast down at that Old Silver Boulevard Park that has increased the erosion. And, and those, because those those invasive species were holding those banks together and that, that went in together. So if you, you want to wipe them out so fast, you're barking up the wrong tree as far as uh, protecting the river banks, the, the flow of the river. We were part of the problem with the Russian all that they take up so much water and it robs water from the irrigators. And that's right. one of the reasons why they're trying to eradicate those specific people. 
take out a heck of a lot of water for us. And they, they're the losers on that one. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why I'm trying to eradicate some of those invasive species. Yeah, well, part of that. Some of them. Yeah. Well, if, if you take them out too fast, you, you're really, you've got to gradually exchange the erosion the part of that they have. Part of that that pull those out. I'm not the city, and, and, and yet I want to answer your question, which again, in my tenure at my foundation, we don't get involved in raising money, designing and constructing, uh, constructing excuse me, a project on behalf of a municipality without a commitment for maintenance. And but this is like a candy store. Yeah, I'm sorry? This is like the candy store. Mm -hmm. We're looking at it, and we want some of this, and we want some of that, and we want to have some of that. And that's all beautiful, and it's what our downtown would, would greatly benefit by. Tourism. My, my concern, and I've served, served on the tourism board, I know the money that comes into tourism from lodging. My concern is, um, can we have a cookie jar big enough to maintain this? Because the last thing that we would want would be to have this beautiful mm -hmm. destination in downtown Trinidad and not be able to keep it clean, maintained, or landscaped. We have the same belief system. Pardon me? We have the same belief system. Can I say something about that? I, one of the, you know, in the past, and I agree with you, the river channel has been somewhat neglected, but with the uh, 
creation of the Purgatory Watershed Partnership and the collaborations that we are developing, we now have a, a kind of a public-private, uh, we have other entities that are entering <coughs> into this O&M uh, on our behalf and are working with this. The Purgatory Watershed Partnership has done a tremendous job working down there, including maintenance, including the river cleanups, and I, so we, we are moving in the right direction. I agree, yeah. but I'm saying above the riverbanks onto the city properties where the parks, the pools, the splash parks, uh, the shade covers, those are the areas I'm concerned about. Mm -hmm. I don't have concerns about the riverbanks. I know they will be taken care of. But it's the playground area, the playgrounds area. I deal with the water. <laughs> I deal with the water. <laughs> Other questions? So, so, one question. Yes. So, from what I heard tonight, you won't be in the river, uh, you won't be creating pools in the river as part of the plan so far. No, not unless it's something that Howard wants in terms of fish. If it's to improve fish habitat, uh, we might include something like that in the concept plan. But other than a few access points to the river and the trail, we're really not proposing anything else in the actual river. Yeah, the, what the plan now is more like what the river is now, and that's, that's where we want to yep. keep it so yep. that the habitat stays good and flows steady. I don't have a question, I just have a comment, if I could. Um, so after listening to all of this tonight, I think that I would um, respectfully ask you, as well as the leadership of Trinidad, to make sure that for every plan or event or whatever you guys decide to do, that you wouldn't forget your neighbors, the rural community just outside of town, and how what you choose to do affects us. Um, I just think we're affected many times for lots of things that happen and I heard this summer over and over and over again in my travels about the urban and rural divide and I never considered it to be huge here, but if we're not careful it will be. So I would just respectfully ask you all to remember those of us who maybe are not within your city boundaries and how your choices affect us. I agree with you 100%. Thank you. And I hope I have stated that to individuals and to this crowd several times tonight and it does take two to communicate and so yep. I think there is obviously a, a means and manner of improving that two-way conversation but it has to come from both ends sure. and, and but I've heard this if I have one takeaway tonight it's what you just said there was another question I think, um, to your point, uh, sir, one of them, uh, or two of them, actually, I, I, I do agree, sometimes you can remove woody invasive species too fast, and, and while I've been here, we have been a lot more careful to leave stumps in place and not go ripping, ripping out the whole tree to try and hold that bank while we get other vegetation established. So a great point. It, it definitely matters how you remove it. Uh, um, and then secondly, uh, I am not a fan of Jetty Jacks. I'm ready to get them out of there right now. But someone that I really like um, suggested, you know, when you rip those Jetty Jacks out, maybe you should call that area Jetty Jack Park or something <laughs> like that. And for, you know, you may agree or disagree, but, you know, I've only been here three years. And I don't have all the connections to the history that everyone else does here. You know, and to his point with the, with the bridge, with the flag, and the, or the jetty jacks, you know, we, we maybe do need to do a better job of, if we do create pocket parks here, that, that we name them, you know, and create educational signage around more history of what was here and how things have changed. So just, you know, when we're doing our brainstorming moving forward, I do think we need to bring more of the historical context. And, and storyboards, I'll call them, um, signage speaking to the history. We, we have probably 15 different signs along 10 miles of the South Platte River in Denver that speak to that very thing. And just as an aside, um, 
I've got X number of business cards today that I'll leave on the side table. It's pretty easy, Jeff, at greenwayfoundation.org. But I'd love to have you go to our website, greenwayfoundation.org, and watch a four-minute video that shows you what the river was in Denver uh, prior to and then immediately after the 1965 flood. Where it was a thousand-year flood with 120,000 cubic feet per second came cooking through Denver and split the, de uh, split the city in half. And what I'll tell you is, and I'll be here all night, but I'll repeat right now what I said at the beginning of this meeting. You have a jewel <coughs> in this river. It is not Jeff's or Ryan's or Dean's river. We are emissaries of your city and your city's leader. And we can recommend putting 50 new jetty jacks in, the south, in, in your river because we think it's a great idea. Nothing happens that the city doesn't approve of. And I know this city well enough to, to make the following statement. There's unanimity, unanimity, and I'll give it up. There's an alignment <laughs> of thought. Don't build what you can't maintain. And, and, and so I, I, I believe that sincerely. But big picture, the magnificence of this river is there. Thanks to the work of everybody or many in this room and zero because of Jeff Shoemaker or Dean Pearson or Ryan Hayes. Our sole goal is to take good and make it greater and to make bold even braver so that and and i will tell you the mayor is 100 percent right so goes a river so goes an economy when our work started 47 years ago property values along the river were 30 excuse me 20 percent less than anywhere else in town and three years ago after an roi study was completed there were 40 percent more and it is a a huge economic driver in property value, in tourism, in sales tax, in whatever, sin tax, whatever, you know, applies. That's where I believe, and the mayor said this, that's where additional revenue can be put aside so what's built is maintained. And, and uh, I, I, I'll just tell you all, I'm at a stage in my life, I get to pick and choose where I work. I work by choice now. I've worked really hard to be able to work by choice. So as Ryan knows, as Dean knows, we're here out of choice and desire and response. And, and all we want to do is, all we want to do is help your really good river become even better. Are there other questions? I, again, I am not rushing anybody. Jeff, I just want to mention one thing. When I look around the room here and there are business people here who have risked money, time, and effort to build businesses. Without any risk, there is no benefit. With, and I, I, I go back to when we started the Fish Peak project. <clears throat> that was a, it turned out to be a $25.5 million project. So it was like, okay, how do we maintain this thing? We lucked out and where it's at today. This is going to probably be our baby as far as maintenance goes down the road. Now, we're looking at creating a destination for it turned out as a destination. And like I mentioned, you know, so goes the river, so goes your economy. So if we beautify that area and build it where everybody benefits, the tax revenue will go up. It'll bring more people, more tourism, which will be able to take that money and use it so that we can maintain that proper and the outside of the other parts of Trinidad as well. Yes, sir. For all those who don't know, I might be the only one who What is a jitty jack? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all you, Julie. You can see oh, the same as the park that I was talking You can, you can see don't the park. Really <coughs> so so I, I, was, I wasn't going to bring this up, but now that it's been raised, I will do 30 seconds on this. Can you so, stand, Julie? Yes. So. Jetty Jacks, uh, if you don't know what those are, please drive across Linden in the daylight and look upstream on the south side of the river. And you will see a bunch of old, rusty, metal, cross-looking things, uh, many of which are now in the river because they are not doing an effective job at erosion control. They were put in place before we had Trinidad Dam because, uh, very understandably, 
communities were flooded big time by big floods before we had the dam. And that was a solution, much like other communities have put lots of cars along the river bank uh, to protect those from erosion. Here we use jetty jacks. They, these were used in Golden. These were used in other places around the state. Unfor well, first of all, now we have a dam. But as Frank pointed out, for those who don't know, when we get rain parked right over us and Raton Creek starts ripping along, Raton Creek comes into the purgatory below the dam. I know when we had that flooding in May, people tried to blame the dam for replacing this water. They were shut. This was all this water plowing down Raton Creek. <coughs> so absolutely, we still have flood concerns that the dam is not going to address. So in our work with Army Corps, to wrap this up, uh, for any jetty jack removal, we've determined with hydraulic modeling that pretty much all the jetty jacks we'll be addressing would be in some level of flood stage, and we would absolutely have to do mitigation in place of the jetty jacks so that we can better protect those banks from flood control. Because a lot of those jetty jacks aren't even working so I, I know some people have resistance to removing them, but they're not even working anymore in a lot of places. We're so just doing something, you know, as you go down off the street, cross the railroad track, walk to the right or drive to the right, when somebody put in beautiful steps going down to the river, back up a little bit, about 50 yards, that has lost. And the only thing holding back to the banks is those jetty jacks. Yeah, right and, and I would love yeah, to. I would love to. Yes. This is what I'd like to do. You bet. It's holding the bank in places, but I would also love to tour you to all the places where they're absolutely failing and are an incredible safety and liability Thank you. hazard. So, Thank uh, anyways, I don't want to take any more time. It's all right. Sorry, sorry. It's all right. It's a public meeting. You bet. Any Jenny Jacks that are touched. The Army Corps will require mitigation to provide equal or better mm -hmm. protection of the banks against flooding. Other questions to see? Yes, sir, in the back. I was curious if you could explain a little bit more on what the plans are for the works building. You mentioned it being city office. I don't know if that was a joke. It seems underwhelming. Uh, do you want to jump at it? You want me to? I would like Jared to talk. Thing I was here on that one. So it, it is a separate project, but because it is along the river walk as part of this visioning plan, we want to incorporate it into this greater project for the city. Thank you. Other questions, thoughts tonight? This has been superb. Yes, ma'am. I think I missed something. Do you have any plans to enhance the falls? Um, not firm. Julie has some. some concept plans and then that's it. Mm -hmm. the falls from the dam and the heavy air. And we're talking about the falls there that would be behind like the wall. Yes. Yeah. Uh, really nothing nothing except even what we're showing Julie's saying is not really been vetted so that's still to be the case. Okay, one more question is you mentioned something about access for commercial would that be the bridge area? Yes. Yeah, right at the edge of the bridge. You would be like the form stairs? Stairs on the west side and a ramp on the east side. Perfect. Yeah. Still standing. Well, if I may, Mayor and, and Jared and Mike and Gil, 
Uh, we're honored to be here. Um, I, I love this project. It excites me. I was talking to my wife Nancy about that today before we came in to get set up. And we, we will be here as, as long or as briefly as the city so chooses. Uh, this project will be wrapped up by the end of December. It is our hope that there will be a significant grant request to GOCO. Um, the, the funding from Trinidad for this effort uh, is being included, is qualifying for the match that's required. And our goal will be to have a grant application into GOCO that I think we will learn in January, early February, if, if Santa was you know, kind or not to us. And, and my hope is, my belief is the answer will be yes. And in all honesty, then the city will determine if our role continues uh, with preliminary design, uh, the, the, the awarding of the grant has no connection to anything to do with the Greenway Foundation moving forward. That will be the city's decision as to how they want to best take that evolution forward. Would we like to be involved 100%? Hope, hope we can. Hope we are, are allowed to do that. That's not our decision. Um, GreenwayFoundation.org. I'm going to leave the cards that I have. Um, you can go to our website, find my name, find my phone number. I got one phone number for four different things I do, so I check. Ryan knows this. We're pretty darn good about keeping up. And, and I, I will tell you all this. Communication can always be better. Okay? And my commitment is to do a better job than we've done, but uh, let's all communicate together and build a better river and build a better, better city. So anything else tonight before we say so long? So long. Thank you.